My 2013 Dodge Grand Caravan caused me such trouble. It's got 170,000 miles on it. But it caused such trouble over a period of two years, I figured I would speak a bit to the PO83B and the transmission problems because having fixed stuff, read, watched plenty of videos, replaced stuff, I've learned a lot. And what I replaced that fixed everything was the TCC valve, the, trans, the torque converter clutch, TCC, torque converter clutch solenoid. When you have the pan off, that's the one up at the top. This this says uh, fluid pressure sensor, and there's different sensors. The, the transmission works on pressure. All I know is I replaced the TCC valve and it fixed everything. Ignore these camshaft position sensors because I did replace the camshaft posi position sensor and all the codes went out including the P083B, at least for a while, but then sure enough, it comes back. I'd back up, there, there would be nothing, or I'd try to back up, and then suddenly it would kick me in the pants, or go to forward and nothing, and so I revved the engine a little bit, nothing, like it slipped in, and then suddenly it would slam in and kick me in the pants. That's the torque converter, not that it's bad, like what they'll try to convince you, but that the device is operating it the TCC torque clutch, torque converter clutch, solenoid. <laughs> it's hard to remember. Okay, so that's this. That's my codes. Now there's the device. That's, that's what I replaced, and it fixed my problems. Runs like a new vehicle, and I took it hundreds of miles, all conditions, in 115 degree heat. But uh, there's there's the device that I took apart to autopsy it. Now, when I took it out to replace it, you know, I I took the pan off, I looked at it, took it out, God, it seemed new, it seemed clean, not what I expected. It, the screens I expected these to be all gunked up and everything, no. Not at all. And so I thought, oh boy, I hope I'm not doing a fix for nothing. Uh, but that's what you'll think too. You expect to look at this and it's going to be all gunked and dirty. But no, the transmission wasn't gunky or dirty and neither was this. So I went ahead and replaced it anyway and continued on. And sure enough, it fixed everything. So that's that's the device. Now here you've got line pressure sensor down here. Well, it works on pressure, so don't worry about the fact this says line pressure sensor. I'm going to replace that one too the next time I'm in there because I have a, a valve body arriving that I got for good measure just in case. But it's this top one, this top one. Variable force solenoid, TCC, torque converter clutch. It's not the one on the left, that's the line pressure. It's the one on the right. In other words, the, on the right, that will be facing up when you take the, the side pan off. And there's the one that I put in. Now this has, a, I noticed that it has like a hex. I was looking at the picture, it looks like there's a little hex, but I looked at the one over there behind me that I took apart for this video and there was no hex. And then I realized, oh, that's because I took a picture, not of the bad one that I was taking out, but the new one. So the new one that I put in has the hex. Why? Don't ask me. If somebody knows their adjustment, I don't know. But the old one does not have a hex. Okay, so there we go for that one. I'm going to pause. As I said, the... Um, the solenoid looked perfect. It looked new when I took it out. Well, I know that there's internal workings. I mean, it's not like I'm a total dummy, but I expect it to be dirty, clogged up, gunked up, and here, put in the new one, now you've got a new vehicle. No, it looked perfect. So I took it apart. So these aren't in a specific order. Uh, okay. Taking the top off, you have this plunger, this black plunger that that ball is sitting on. The ball actually goes on top. And this sleeve here that you see 
makes a plunger, it controls a plunger going up and down because once you take that sleeve out, the plunger is floppy, sloppy loose. Now that ball is going to go down in here. That's what its operation is, is to be up against there. There is what the position of the ball is when the van is running. See that ball sits on there like that. Now there's the coil. Now those coils are really put together solid. That, that coil is not moving up and down. The coil just sits there. Those are good, strong wires. Now the spring picture that I'm gonna show goes in the end here. It fits inside of the end. So there's a spring there that when the magnet pulls down, there's a spring there that resists the movement. See, there's the screens that I took that picture. There's the sleeve. Now, there's the spring. Let me pause this for a second. Okay, you can clearly see that there's the wires. I mean, they're good. That's why when they check the selenoids, they say, you're checking your ohms, have fun doing it. It really doesn't do anything. They're going to check out as likely good. Something really has to be wrong for it to the solenoid wires to be bad. Well, the coils look good and strong, and the upper part of it looked good and clean. It didn't seem clogged up. Well, then what could be wrong? What could be wrong that makes these things go bad? Okay, so here's what I found. Once I took apart the bottom, it was a different story. So let's take a look at it. First of all, let me show you this one. This is with the bottom completely off and then a plate came out. This thing here is a magnet. Believe it or not, that's a thin, super strong magnet. Okay. And well, you see the gunk that was, now that's looking down inside. And so you've got that plunger going up and down, the big plate that's in there going up and down. And here's all this metal. That magnet attracts the metal like clay, really fine clay, even finer than that. Almost, we're, we're talking steel, almost like atoms almost. I mean, that's how fine it is. But it does get in there. And then that plunger is going up and down over, you know, 100,000 miles, and it, it packs in to where that plunger cannot go back and forth and that ball can't release. And so the torque converter has trouble releasing. That's it. That's my analysis. But this spring, see, the spring is stuck on the magnet. I had to reach down in there and pull it off of the magnet. That thing is so strong. So it's a complex construction. And so the, the spring goes in the middle of there. It sits loosely in the middle. So this bottom part is where the nightmare is. That's what gets gunked up. There's another picture of the, the gunk. That gunk looks like, well, that's just oil and grease. I'll just wipe that out of there, or wash it off with some Dawn. No, that's metal. That's metal like, like clay is the best way to describe it. Okay, so. So knowing this, what conclusions can we come up with going forward? And so here's what I came in, came up with. I, I put them down because you can't remember everything. So Dodge Grand Caravan, there's my stuff. You can pause if you want to read it. Strange shifting, I didn't have any idea what it was doing. I told people when I drive this thing, I don't even know what it's doing when it's shifting. I would turn it off, pull over. Sometimes I would do it at a stoplight, turn the key off, turn the key back on, and it's like it reset it. Uh, probably it was because I was putting it in park uh, to shut it off and, and restart it. That's probably what was doing it because some people during their tests of this same problem go 60 miles an hour and then put it in neutral. And then they slow down and stop and it doesn't kill the engine. So that's probably what's occurring. Okay, so here's here's my conclusions. 
I replaced it and everything seems perfect. I just I just did the smog and the tabs are arriving in a few days. Autopsy conclusions. Took it out, but it looked perfect. Top screen seemed clean, but bottom was packed with gunk. Strong magnet, which I had no idea there was a magnet down there. A strong magnet was packed with microscopic clay-like metal. Solenoid wires are perfect and strong. No wonder checking the ohms does nothing as everyone reports. It's a waste of time, likely. I'm not telling you what to do. It's likely a waste of time. Many people report, the best people report, uh, I'm tongue-tied for his motor city mechanic also reports. You can check. Here's the pins. Here's the chart. You could check. And it's probably not going to do anything. It's probably going to check out as okay, but people report. It may check out as okay, but they, the solenoids don't seem right. That, that includes your, your shifting solenoids. It, as a matter of fact, it may convince people that the solenoids are good when they are not. Never, okay, never take out solenoids such as junkyard and reuse them because I was dangerously close to doing this. Never take them out and reuse them. They could easily be packed with similar metal clay and there's no way to get that metal out of there. Once it's in there, you can't get it out. And you can flush all you want. Nothing's going to flush it out. That magnet is strong and it's going to keep the solenoid from working right. Okay, so I believe the check ball was jammed up, closed. Whether I got it backwards or not, like the flow of the fluid through there, I'm not sure when it's up there jammed up, I will call that closed. And when it's pushed down, when the solenoid works and pulls itself down, then it opens up that check ball and lets fluid flow. So when it's up there, I'm calling that closed. Okay. I believe the check ball was jammed up, closed. The torque converter could not disengage fast enough, stalling the engine and causing damage to the torque converter similar to slowing down or stopping on a manual transmission without pushing in the clutch pedal. That's it. That's it in a nutshell. Flushing would do little or nothing. Change the fluid and filter often. That all the time you're running and you have that metal in there, it's not just getting on that thing in the pan. It's a good thing that people put all those extra magnets in there. It's that those microscopic atoms of iron are also getting in all the solenoids. Now I see why it helps to just change the whole solenoid pack, which I, I have one. It's supposed to arrive today or tomorrow. Because if you have the packed in gunk, like I did in the torque converter clutch uh, solenoid, it most likely is reflective of what's taking place in all the solenoids. All the solenoids have that magnet down in there. And they, if the one is jammed up that you can easily get to, it likely has taken place with the other, the other ones. It's the old saying, as the teeth go, so go the bones. And so change that fluid often. It's not to keep it all lubricated. It is to get the metal out of it that shorts things out, it, that makes the transmission fluid conductive and shorts everything out and also stops the valves from working. It is to get the metal out of there, not to get fresh fluid in there so everything's nice and, nice and lubricated like I thought. That concludes this. Feel free to uh, join my Facebook group. I'll be doing more autopsies like uh, there's a solenoid shift solenoids i believe they're all the same i bought a uh, a valve body just for the purpose to autopsy it i don't have any idea of uh, that i think it's right to go to the junkyard and get junk parts and go put them inside your transmission i'm not saying to do that i wanted to take it apart feel free to uh, join the a Facebook group I created for people in Las Vegas to kind of get networking for parts, help, tr especially transmission help, stuff like that. Also, when I said valve body, I kind of mis misspoke. I meant, the, you know, the solenoid pack is what I got. To finish up, it's 115 degrees out there in Las Vegas right now, and there's a picture of Fortification Hill during cooler times.